Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome you all to the 16th lecture of this course. This 16th lecture is on nanotechnology in point of care diagnostics. So in this lecture, we will be learning point of care test and why point of care diagnostics and also we are going to learn various paper based diagnosis and I will demonstrate a, a simple experiment to understand the lateral flow assay and we are also going to learn the role of nanotechnology in point of care testing. So let us see what is a point of care test. So it is a simple medical test that can be performed at any place by any person without the help of any medical technician. And uh, this is in contrast with the historical pattern where you will be sending the sample to the medical lab and waiting for hours to days to get the results and during which time care must continue without the desired information. So most of the point of care systems are uh, based on the principle of easy to use membrane based test strips and these are mainly useful for uh, rapid detection of pathogens. So why we need point of care diagnostics? So here the main important property is like uh, it gives the results rapidly okay, and it will save a lot of time and the next one is patient responsibility and compliance. So here the point of tests are widely self administered. So it is making the patients far more responsible for managing their own condition and here the cost is less when compared to the conventional laboratory analysis. And but it can do only one or few different tests. So let us see the FDA definition of a simple test. So according to FDA, so the simple test should be a fully automated instrument or self-contained test, and uh, it could allow the use of direct unprocessed samples. For example, you can use the blood or nasal swabs or urine sample directly, and it needs a only basic non-technique dependent reagent manipulation. For example mix reagent A and mix reagent B, you will get the uh, result and here it should not require any uh, technical or specialist training and no need for uh, electronic or me mechanical maintenance okay. and also it should produce the results that are clear to read such as positive or negative and also it should contain a quick reference sheet written at the educational level of the user. It should be in a simple language so that the anyone, any common man can understand and he can use the particular test kit. So let us see what is a paper based uh, diagnosis. So the paper fabrication is one of the most important technologies in human history because this paper is widely manufactured and uh, from the renewable sources and it is inexpensive and also it is combustible and biodegradable. For example, if you are making a paper based uh, diagnostic kit for uh, detecting the pathogens, you can after detecting the pathogens, we can discard the kit by simple incineration, you can burn it okay. And again, the porous structure of paper enables wicking of liquid. Okay, so which is important for lateral flow assays and chromatographic applications. And this paper based diagnosis is suitable for biological applications because the cellulose is compatible with the biological samples and this paper surface can be easily manipulated through printing, coating and impregnation and it can be fabricated in large quantities. And another important property is uh, this paper can be easily altered to suit our different application. So let us see the historical perspective. So this first paper based sensor can be considered the invention of paper chromatography by Martin and Sainz. So they were awarded with the Nobel Prize in uh, 1952 and another milestone in this field was the commercialization of pregnancy test kit okay. So which can be considered one of the most used point of care diagnosis. So this paper based uh, uh, kits are mainly useful for rapid diagnostics okay. So the majority of these tests are simple and provide a yes or no answer where response time is critical to the user. For example, uh, in case of food safety, so if you want to know whether your food is contaminated with mycotoxins, you add a drop of food sample to the paper based diagnostic kit and it will tell you the presence of or absence of mycotoxins. And uh, in case of uh, conventional technique, you have to take, to the, take the sample to the lab and we have to wait for a few hours. But in case of paper diagnostic kit, you can get the result within a few seconds. Okay. 
And similarly, it could be useful for various other applications like environmental monitoring. For example, if you want to check the whether the water is contaminated with the heavy metals or some other microbes, so it can be useful for uh, monitoring those things with a simple paper based diagnostic kit. So, these are some of the examples of commercial rapid uh, test kits. So, for example, uh, we have the kits for HIV, TB, influenza and malaria. So, these are the various uh, paper based test kits which is commercially available in the market. So, let us see some of the examples of rapid uh, paper based test kit. So, the first paper based diagnostic device was created for urine analysis. Okay. So, these paper based uh, urine analysis device utilize calorimetric assist to measure the glucose and protein concentration in the urine. So, here the, uh, the white color of the paper provides a strong contrast, so which enhances the result of the calorimetric assays. So, you can see here this is a simple uh, paper based uh, rapid kit for measuring the glucose or protein concentration in a urine sample. And when we add the sample here, so if you get the color in this side, it will indicate the glucose, presence of glucose and if you get the color in this side, it indicates the presence of protein. So, you can see here, so with respect to the concentration, the intensity of the color is getting increased. Okay. So, this is for the glucose and this is for the protein and based on the strip reader, we can easily read the intense color intensity and we can estimate the concentration of glucose and BSA in the particular urine sample. So, let us see why we need paper based diagnostics. So, as I told you earlier, these are sensitive and specific and user friendly and also it is rapid and robust and it is equipment free. We do not need any uh, sophisticated equipment for uh, uh, using this paper based diagnostic kit. Okay. So, they are mainly uh, read by the naked eye or if a quantitative detection is required, the equipment is small or cheap okay. and it is deliverable to end users and can be developed using inkjet or wax printing or screen printing technology. So, there are three types of uh, paper based diagnostics, dipstick assays, letter flow assays and microfluidic paper analytical devices. So, let us see one by one in detail. The first one is uh, dipstick assays. So, these are these simplest ones because these are uh, based on blotting of the sample onto a paper pre-stored with reagents. Some of the examples are pH test strips or urine test strips. So, these are simple to design and easy to manufacture and it is very convenient to use. Okay. So, how they make the pH test strips? So, the pH test strips are manufactured by soaking a piece of filter paper into a mixture of acid and alkali indicators with a certain concentration ratio. So, after it is dried, the paper is impregnated with the detection reagents. So, when an unknown sample is dispensed on the paper, the detecting reagents react with the analyte okay, and it will develop the color. So, by referring to a standard indicator card, the pH value of the solution can be indicated and thus the concentration of H plus is semi quantified. So, you might have used the pH paper in your lab. So, just you put a pH paper in your uh, any unknown solution, it will tell you the pH of the particular solution. Okay. So, it is based on the principle of dipstick assay. And similarly, the another thing is urine test strips. Okay. So, it have been designed to detect the metabolic products in the urine. So, which have become basic diagnostic tools to indicate the pathological changes. For example, urinary metabolic products like uh, glucose, protein and salt can from the patients with uh, nephritic or diabetic disease can be easily detected using a standard urine test strip. So, we can use this kind of urine test strips and we can dip in the uh, urine sample of the patient and we can easily uh, analyze the presence of glucose or protein or the salt. So, next one is the uh, lateral flow assays. Okay. So, this lateral flow assay have all the reagents pre-stored in the strip. So, it is also similar to the dipstick, but it will also integrate the flow of the sample. So, here the flow passes through the different zones of the strip, which have different reagents for different function. So, usually this uh, later flow assay have four different parts. The first one is sample pad, the next one is conjugation pad, and third one is detection pad, and fourth one is observant pad. So, the sample pad is mainly made up of cellulose and it will filter the sample from impurities and it stores the dried assay buffer. And next one is the conjugation pad. So, it is made up of glass fibers and uh, it is used as a dry reagent storage for the labels and in this pad, the binding reaction between the labels and the analyte starts. Okay. So, in the detection pad, it is made up of uh, nitrocellulose. 
the capture reagents are fixed and the signal is developed in this detection pad and fourth one is uh, absorbent pad it is made up of cellulose filters so the function of the absorbent pad is to wick the fluid through the membrane okay so in this way the amount of sample can be increased resulting in an increased sensitivity and this uh, lateral flow assay is available in two formats sandwich and competitive so usually the sandwich format assays are mainly utilized for analyte with multiple antigen epitopes and this uh, competitive format assays are designed to detect an analyte with a single antigen epitope so let us see the lateral flow assay in detail okay so this lateral flow assay contains uh, four different pads sample pad conjugate pad and membrane and wicking pad so in the sample pad we will be adding the sample and in the conjugate pad it contains antibodies conjugate to the gold nanoparticles or lactic microspheres and here the sample and antibody everything move in this direction using the capillary force and in the test line we will be having the antibody which is specific for your antigen and in the control line we will be having the anti IgG antibody okay so which is specific for your uh, gold nanoparticles conjugated antibody so when you add the sample so the antigen present the sample will bind with the antibody in the conjugate pad okay so it will move towards this test line so in the test line so this antigen will be sandwiched between two antibodies all the unbound antibody will move to the control line where antibody antibody reaction will happen okay so let me explain the lateral flow assay one more time in detail there's a most of the commercial kit is based on lateral flow assay so here in this lateral flow assay we'll be having sample pad and we'll be having conjugate pad and below that we'll be having nitrocellulose membrane and here we'll be having absorbent pad and in the nitrocellulose membrane we'll be having test line and control line so when we add the sample here so the sample contains the antigen so this sample will move in this direction through capillary force and uh, when it reaches the conjugate pad in the conjugate pad it will be having antibody conjugated with gold nanoparticles so here in the conjugate pad so this antigen will come and bind with the antibody which is conjugated with gold nanoparticles and this antigen antibody complex will move in this direction so when it reaches the test line so in the test line you will be having antibody specific for your antigen so this antigen antibody complex will come and bind here so your antigen antibody complex will come and bind and your antigen will be sandwiched between the two antibodies okay so here you will get a color line and this unbound antibody will move to the next line that is your control line okay. so this unbound free antibody conjugate antibody which is having this gold nanoparticles it will move to the control line so in the control line we will be having anti antibody so this antibody is specific for your this antibody conjugated antibody so this con so this conjugated antibody will come and bind here so it form a color line here so your positive sample you will get two lines one is your test line next one is your control line so this control line confirms your kit is working properly and the sample flow is in the proper direction so here in the test line you will be having antigen antibody reaction 
and in the control line you will be having antibody antibody reaction okay. So this is a basic principle of lateral flow assay. I hope you understood the principle of lateral flow assay. So this is a, a typical schematic view of lateral flow test strip okay. So it is having this kind of arrangement if you open the kit you will have this kind of arrangement I will open and show you how it look like. So the sample pad you can see the arrangement is like a strip like arrangement and below the sample pad you are having the conjugate pad and followed by you are having the nitrocellulose membrane and this nitrocellulose membrane is having a test line which is having the antibody specific for your uh, antigen and in control line you are having antibody so that antibody is specific for your antibody that is uh, the conjugated antibody okay and this one is observant pad it will observe the excess sample so let us see the simple experiment to understand the uh, lateral flow assay using this uh, pregnancy test kit. So here we will be using this uh, urine sample of pregnant woman. So the urine sample of pregnant woman contains HCG that is human chorionic gonadotropin. okay. So when you add the sample here you will get two lines. So the two lines indicate the positive result and uh, in the other one we will be adding this simple water where there is no antigen and you will get only formation of line in the control line. So for the positive sample you will be having the two bands control band and test band okay and uh, in case of negative you will get the band only in the control line okay and if there is no line the test is invalid. So I will show you the uh, demonstration of later flow assay using the pregnancy test kit so you can easily understand the concept of uh, later flow assay. So let me explain the principle of later flow assay using a simple pregnancy test kit. So first I will open this uh, pregnancy test kit, I will show you the arrangement of various pads in this uh, kit. So as I told you earlier this uh, lateral flow assay contains various pads. The first one is your uh, sample pad, so where your sample will be loaded and this one this color one is your uh, conjugate pad where your antibody is conjugated with gold nanoparticle or some color beads and the below one is your uh, membrane, nitrocellulose membrane. So where you are having the test line as well as the control line okay. So the test line is containing antibody specific for your antigen and this uh, control line it is having antibody specific for the conjugated antibody. And this is your observant pad so this will observe the excess uh, sample okay. So, so in this two kit in the first one I will add uh, only the water okay. So this is a sample port, so where I will add the simple water. So when I add the water, the sample will flow using the capillary force and in water there is no antigen. So you will get only one line, so you will get line only in the control. You can see here this is a C is a control and T is a test line. So you'll you will get the line only in the control. You can see here the formation of color line that is only in the control you are getting this line okay. In the other kit I will add the urine sample. So in the uh, kit where I added the urine sample you will be able to see two lines. So one is for a test line another one is for control. So if we have two lines that means the particular person is pregnant. So you can see here you are able to see two lines right. So one is for the 
control and one is for the test line. We are able to see the two lines in case of uh, urine sample and in case of water we are able to see only one line. Okay, so we are getting only one line in the control and in case of urine sample you are able to see two lines. So by the using simple experiment you are able to understand the concept of lateral flow as a. I hope you understood the concept of uh, lateral flow as a. Uh, now we move on to this microfluidic based uh, paper analytical devices. Okay. So these micro pads are made by patterning paper with variety of as a designs. So it is mainly based on capillary force to drive the aqueous fluid movement. So we can make the two dimensional or three dimensional micro pads and these two dimensional micro pads are made by patterning physical or chemical hydrophobic boundaries to form the micro channels on the paper and various approaches like including cutting or uh, wax printing can be used to create the channels and barriers in the paper. And here the reagents required for biochemical reactions can be immobilized on the paper with uh, different patterns. For example, we can make a four leaf clover by hand dispensing or inkjet printing technology and when the reagents are dried the paper based devices can be used for, for biochemical analysis. So these three dimensional micro pads are produced by stacking layers of pattern paper in a such a way that channels in adjacent layers of paper connect with each other. And compared to the two dimensional micro pads, these three dimensional micro pads have several advantages. So due to their capability to incorporate complex networks of channels and thus providing multiple functionalities. So this is a typical example of two dimensional micro pad. So this is a channel okay and uh, this channel can be created using photoresist or wax and this is a test zone and when you add the sample so it can detect the glucose or the protein in the urine sample or any other sample and this is a three dimensional micro pads okay so here it is having multiple channels and which could be useful for uh, detecting multiple pathogens so let us see the comparison of different paper based diagnostic techniques so each has its own advantages as well as disadvantages so the dipstick method is easy and fast optimization but the problem is it is a uh, only optical direction so there is no quantification and this LFA it is a uh, versatile and uh, it is a uh, based on the flow lateral flow okay and uh, here we can also do the electrochemical detection and the problem is long optimization times and also the long fabrication and when you use this micro pad so it is uh, versatile as well as it is having this uh, different detection methods and the main advantage is the sample volume is here it is less we can use only 10 microliter of sample but the drawback is it need long optimization times and uh, this paper based diagnosis also categorized based on their reaction it can be categorized into chemical biological and electrochemical so the most chemical reactions with the color change can be achieved on paper such as acid alkali reaction or precipitation reaction and redox reaction so which I already explained to you uh, with the example of pH test strips. The next one is the biological reaction antigen antibody reaction. So the example is the home pregnancy test kit where the antigen antibody reactions happens okay. So the same idea could be useful for measuring the tumor markers as well as for diagnosing various infectious diseases. So the next one is the biological reaction by nucleic acid hybridization that is NAT. So here this NAT assay requires two types of oligonucleotide probes. First one is detector probe, the next one is capture probe. And this detector and capture probes are both complementary with target nucleic acid sequence. And here the detector probe is used to combine with a tag to make the reaction visible or measurable. And here the tag can be colored particles or it can be gold nanoparticles for colorimetric assays. And it can be electroactive molecules for example thionine for electrochemical measurements. So using this NAT assay we can easily identify the genetic as well as infectious diseases. So let us see what is electrochemical reaction. So here this electrochemical reaction can be achieved on the basis of both redox reaction and non-redox reactions. So the redox reactions are involved in electron transfer between the molecules or particles and this non-redox reactions are related with the changes of electrical properties. For example, impedance or resistance will get changed. So the most successful example of electrochemical direction is the blood glucose meter. So this glucose meter is an amphirometer okay, and it measures the quantity of electroactive species as a result of oxidation of glucose by reagents 
stored in the test strips. So, this test strip is impregnated with glucose oxidase and other components. So, when you add a drop of blood, the glucose oxidase catalyzes the oxidation of glucose and the glucose meter quantifies the electrons generated by the oxidation and correlates them to the level of glucose in the blood. So, let us see the uh, role of nanotechnology in point of care testing. So, in the paper based biosensors, so the nanometers are mainly used as the labels or carriers. So, the gold nanoparticles have been mostly used and because these gold nanoparticles have excellent labeling property and easy functionalization, easy manipulation and also it is biocompatible and it produces a strong red color and it also have a characteristic surface plasma resonance and electrochemical activity. And some of the other nanoparticles like magnetic nanoparticles, quantum dots, liposomes, carbon and ceria nanoparticles have also been explored for point of care diagnostics. So, let us see the example of nano biosensor for protein detection and uh, here we can uh, detect the thrombin. Okay. So, this is also similar to the your pregnancy test kit only and uh, the letter flow assay. You can see here sample pad, conjugate pad okay. and here instead of antibody we will be using this aptamer. So, the aptamers are oligonucleotides or oligopeptides. So, which is specific for the particular uh, protein. Okay. So, you can see here when you add the sample with thrombin you are getting two lines okay. in the test zone as well as the control zone you are getting the line and here this sample without thrombin there is no line in the test zone. So, using this uh, uh, strip reader we can easily quantitate the amount of thrombin present in the particular sample. So, the next example is we can use the quantum dots. So, you can use the quantum dots also for uh, diagnostic applications and we can measure the fluorescent intensity using the uh, strip reader. So, the next example is nano biosensors for cell detection. So, here the cells cannot uh, run intact through the pores of the membranes, so but they can be attached to the surface of the paper. So, using this we can uh, detect the pathogens like pseudomonas or staphylococcus bacteria and uh, where we will be using these uh, gold nanoparticle functionalized specific antibodies and it can detect 500 to 5000 colony forming units. So, the common diagnosis for diabetic patient is uh, urine test or blood test. Okay. So, the urine test will give the qualitative results and, and blood test will give you the quantitative test and uh, this blood test can be done by finger printing method. So, here the sample is the whole blood, it is placed on a chemically coated uh, strip of paper and which can be usually tested. So, but the major drawback is we have to prick your fingers every day to measure the glucose level. So, it is a little bit a painful situation for the patients with the diabetics. So, to overcome this uh, invasive techniques, so scientists from Leeds University they have developed a non-invasive device. Okay. So, that could end your daily finger printing for uh, people with uh, diabetes and uh, they have used a engineered nano engineered silica glass with ions that fluoresce in infrared light when a low power laser hits them. And when the glass is in contact with the user skin, the extent of fluorescent signals varies in relation to the concentration of glucose in their blood. So, here the device measures the length of time the fluorescent lasts for and uses that to calculate the glucose level in a person's bloodstream without the need for a needle and this process takes less than 30 seconds. So, instead of pricking your finger, so it is similar to your biometric device, you just keep your finger on that device and within 30 seconds it will estimate the blood glucose. So, next one is continuous glucose monitoring system. So, this is a tiny sensor. So, which can be inserted under the skin and it will send the information about the glucose level through the radio waves from the sensor to a pager like wireless monitor and it will help the patient and doctor and accordingly they can take the insulin. So, how the monitoring system works? So, here a circular patch is placed on the upper arm with a special applicator every 2 weeks okay. and this tiny filament pierces the skin and measures the glucose level in the interstitial fluid between the skin cells and uh, the readings are sent to a reader through this NFC wave that is a near field communication waves. Uh, this is the same technology which we use for contactless card payments okay. and this data can automatically be sent to up to 20 other phones. Okay. It can enable the patients to keep an eye on their children when they are at school. So, here the benefits of CGMS is like uh, it, it has increased security for alarms and alerts and here we are getting the immediate feedback. Okay. And also the blood glucose trend provides more uh, information than the static readings 
and here the sensors can be programmed if it is a low glucose or high glucose it can make some alarm so recently this uh, google made a smart contact lens okay so this uh, contact lens have a sensor okay and this can detect the glucose in the tears so this technology uses a small uh, nanoparticles which is embedded into this hydrogel lenses okay and these engineered nanoparticles react with the glucose molecules in the tears and it causes a chemical reaction that changes the color of the lenses this uh, tiny sensors will send the information about the blood glucose to your mobile phone and also the color of the contact lens also get changed so based on the color also we will get a idea so what is the sugar level in the blood the another thing is uh, nano tattoos so we can inject the nano ink into the skin and uh, external device to measure the and translate this fluorescence so here this change in fluorescence depends on the blood sugar so we can uh, inject this uh, sensor using the minimally invasive technology okay so once it is injected the tattoos are made okay and it can measure the uh, sugar level as well as the sodium level in your blood and we can have this uh, portable optical reader for example we can use this uh, modified iphone case okay which can be used to detect the sodium levels through this uh, nano sensor tattoos so next one is uh, we can also use this nanotechnology sensor to detect the type 1 diabetes in the breath so acetone is usually found in the healthy person's breath approximately 900 ppb that is the particles per billion okay but the concentration is double in case of type 1 diabetic patient so here we will be using the substrate with gold electrodes coated it with an uh, ultra thin semiconductor film made of nanoparticles and here this tungsten oxide mixed with the uh, silicon is mainly used okay so in presence of acetone uh, the electrical resistance of the material drops okay so it depends on the electrical resistance we can easily detect the diabetes in the breath of the particular person so based on this uh, electrical resistance based uh, breath sensor we can easily identify the person with the type 1 diabetes and uh, we can also use this uh, lateral flow strip chip to diagnose the malaria so usually the microscopy has been the considered as the gold standard for diagnosing malaria but for using the microscope uh, we need a lab setting as well as a well trained researchers so to overcome this drawback we can use this nano or microfluidic technologies so here we'll be using this antibody which is specific for the malarial parasite and uh, here we'll be using this uh, blood sample okay so if there is a two lines that means he is positive for the malaria so let us see how we can use this uh, magnetic nanoparticles for detecting the tb that is the tuberculosis bacteria and this usually the magnetic nanoparticles are dispersed and in presence of uh, tb this will form like a clusters so due to this clusters there is a change in the nmr signals so this is a microfluidic uh, uh, nmr biosensor so which could be useful for detecting the change in the nmr signals so let us see how we can use this technology in diagnosis so we can use a simple uh, phone camera and that can send the result of the assay to a laboratory so where a specialist person can analyze it and send back the result and this type of technology can tremendously enhance the healthcare in extreme places like the developing world and battlefields so where not always the possible intervention of specialized people or the use of expensive machining instruments so here we can use the normal camera as a imaging device so that will digitize the result and transmit them to an expert and an expert will interpret the results and uh, replace with the treatment so let us see the advantages of uh, nano or microfluidic technologies so here these nano or microfluidic technologies have been successfully integrated with the current poc devices for on chip diagnosis and also for monitoring various infectious diseases at research limited settings and this uh, poc diagnostics have significant advantages over uh, conventional diagnostics such as reducing the cost as well as increasing the portability and disposability and again future trends in diagnostic focus on extending the availability to decentralized hospitals and also to the rural areas more effectively where wireless networks are available so as a summary of this lecture in this lecture we have learned what is point of care test and uh, various paper based diagnosis and also we have seen the demonstration of uh, later flow as a using a simple pregnancy test kit and we have also learned uh, various roles of uh, nanotechnology in this point of care testing okay so i'll end my lecture here i thank you all for listening to the lecture i'll see you all in another interesting lecture